When it comes to a franchise as controversial as Grand Theft Auto, pushing the boundaries is something that would come with each new entry, and with San Andreas, one man may have actually gone a little too far. From having a movie starring Harry Potter showcasing the dark real-life consequences of Rockstar's creations, to politicians making them out to be the enemy at every turn, one controversy would sway public opinion and ask the question, what should be allowed in a video game? This is the Hot Coffee Controversy. Contrary to a lot of the opinions you'd see on Reddit, making a video game is pretty hard. Budgets are tight, devs neglect their children to work over Christmas, the pay is so why even bother? Two words. They wanted to make a delicious ass video game. But often what the developers think is cool and what corporate does are two completely different things. And this time, Rockstar's president Sam Hauser wanted something that had never been done in Grand Theft Auto. Japanese RPG elements. I mean, you got stats, respect, weapon skill, stamina, muscle, fat, and sex appeal. And while the sex appeal stat was ahead of its time, Sam actually wanted players to engage in intercourse virtually. Now remember, this was the early 2000s, and not only that, but the inclusion of nudity would mean the worst nightmare for investors, the dreaded adults-only rating. A stamp of sin signed by Satan himself, which would all but banish your game to be hidden behind shovelware like chicken shoot for the Wii, since, you know, they weren't exactly stalking hentai games at your local game crazy. Now don't get me wrong, Sam understood this, so he got to work on finding a happy medium between Mario Party and the Newgrounds adult section. Just four months before release, Sam sent an email to Rockstar's head of operations, Jennifer Colby, with a list of acts he planned for the game. And of course, she voiced her concern. And in response to Jennifer's concern, Sam went to his creative team to find out exactly what would be allowed in a game like this. Obviously, Sam was very desperate to push the boundaries, but with the game so close to release, his team was rushing to add in his last minute additions. Just two months before release, the team was working hard to put a bow on this bad boy when Sam actually gets an email from Rockstar's co-founder, Terry Donovan. The email laid out an extensive list of alterations that would have to be made in order to avoid said adults-only rating, but at this point, it was, it was way too late. So, Mr. Hauser had some decisions to make. Do they delay the game to make the alterations? I mean, the thing is, you're promising the suits funding this game profit. Sam even floated the idea of releasing two versions of the game, one with the M rating and one with the AO rating. But the thing is, it's too expensive to produce a second version of a game that's just gonna be exclusively sold on the gamer's dark web. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, or out loud, I don't know how you act when you're alone, why don't they just delete the sex? Can't they just delete the sex? Delete the sex, Sam! Well, according to Sam Hauser, it wasn't that easy, because you see, the way the game was coded, it was such a mess of overlapping systems that if you take one thing out, you risk breaking another, and at this point, it would open up a whole other can of squirms. It was too risky. So in the end, it was easier to just disable the thing that triggers the sex minigame. Because, I mean, come on, nobody's gonna hack into their game on consoles, right? Nobody has that much time on their hands. Can you sense my sarcasm? So Rockstar signed, sealed, spit on, and sent off their year and a half long love child into the market. The game released on October 26, 2004, and was met with glowing reviews. Children and adults alike were living it up in this new world they created, exploring all the acts of terrorism the game had to offer. But all the while, a piping hot pot of joe lay dormant under the poorly textured surface. While the game was being enjoyed by console owners, the tight-knit community of PC modders were fizzing for Rockstar's newest title to be ported over to their souped-up Hot Wheels PC. But a few impatient modders cracked into a copy of San Andreas for PlayStation 2 and noticed some interesting keywords buried within. Words like kissing and ah! jobs, and of course, sex. Now, these acts didn't appear anywhere in game. I mean, outside of giving your SO a smooch after a romantic night at Cluck and Bell. And I mean, come on, if it did, people would be talking about it. Or no, people would be screaming about it, pitchforks and all. So they decided to keep their discoveries to themselves until closer to the PC port's release date. During this time, though, a modder that went by Barton Waterduck attempted to view the animations, but the tool he used only rendered out stick figures and didn't really give much to go off of. Therefore, he had to wait until release. Fast forward to the PC port its North American release. Patrick Wildenborg, a modder based in the Netherlands, contacted his buddy in America. Patrick requested the game's source files, and in between fistfuls of McDoubles and DQ blizzards, his American friend agreed. Now what happens next would lead to the greatest gaming controversy to date. Patrick opened the files, painstakingly combed through every line of code until he found it. Using a special editor, he unlocked the thing that Rockstar and Sam Hauser tried to hide. He just didn't know it yet. So after making the changes, he saved the file and sent it right back to his American friend. June 8th, 2005. At 11.37 p.m., Patrick would receive a video file from his buddy in the States. And in it, a scene depicting Carl Johnson, the game's protagonist, engaging in sexual acts with a female NPC. Go girl! Like a good Mormon, Carl remained fully clothed as he dry humped this poor woman. I hope you girl. Complete with rumble effects to add to the immersion of getting laid. It's just like real life. You're incredible. 
You should get paid for this. The way this minigame would have been triggered is by romancing one of your many in-game girlfriends hard enough to fulfill your relationship meter. At which point your shoddy would be like a melody and invite you in for some coffee. You wanna have some coffee? And then you know what happens next. Alright bitch, let's roll! And with this discovery, Patrick would release the patch to the public the very next day with the title, Hot Coffee. A fitting euphemism. And in just the first month, the patch would be downloaded over 1 million times. Okay, the cat was out of the bag, man. Well, the metaphorical cat, because, you know, no nudity. All right, now get this. The same day the patch releases, Sam Hauser is sitting at his computer desk with a cup of presumably hot coffee, and he's browsing the GTA forums to see how people are liking their game. And then... He sees it. His jaw dropped. There was nothing he could do but get ready for the piss and spit storm that was forecasted to hit Rockstar Games. And then Doug Lowenstein, the president of the Entertainment Software Association, saw the video making its rounds on the internet. And you don't want to piss off the ESA, man. They were responsible for E3, publishing, promoting, you name it. And needless to say, he was pissed. So the PR team over at Rockstar were instructed to keep their mouths shut if questioned about hot coffee. That was until they were confronted by the Elder Gods themselves, the presidents of both the ESA and the ESA. RB. So backed into a corner, Sam opened his mouth, and what came out was something that nobody saw coming. He told them that the Hot Coffee minigame was the work of third-party modders, recycling old animations to create a sexually suggestive minigame, and that Rockstar had nothing to do with it. So a lie. This would lead to a worldwide investigation. When I say worldwide, I mean countries were deciding if they even wanted their citizens to be exposed to this filth. The ESRB themselves would come under fire for failing to give the proper AO rating to the title. State officials and parents everywhere were so mad at this hidden feature, you would have thought that it included a tutorial on how to eat your fucking dog. Very explicit pornographic scenes had been uh, placed into the game uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. On top of all of this, the modder who was responsible for uncovering this feature was filled with stress and anxiety as news vans camped outside of his house, hoping to speak with the little scoundrel. So after getting tired of hearing his phone ring non-stop, Patrick would delete the mod and speak out in Rockstar's defense via his personal website, stating that even though he was not responsible for creating the minigame, in order to view it, you'd have to modify the game's code. Therefore, it shouldn't be classified as a cheat, easter egg, or a secret, but rather a leftover mechanic from its development. So after feeling the sickness and his stomach died down, he goes to bed, and he's awoken by his phone ringing one more time, but this time, it was Rockstar. They called to thank him for his act of good faith, verifying their identity with an email later. All seemed right in the world. That is until... Rockstar doubled down. On July 14th, 2005, they would release a public statement denouncing any involvement in the minigame, stating that it was the work of a determined group of hackers who have gone to significant trouble to alter scenes in the original version of the game. And with the second lie, the ESRB did acknowledge Rockstar's denouncement, but had no choice but to lay down the long dick of the law, take that title of sin out back, tell it to look at the flowers, and stamp it with the dreaded AO label. This would put into motion a massive recall from all big box retailers. I'm talking Walmart, Target, Best Buy, Burger King all had to pull the game off their shelves and cease all sales of the title. Across the seas though in Australia, those dudes didn't even have an age rating high enough for this game, which meant any game like this would be tossed into the beefy five layers of hell, never to even be mentioned again. Australians really don't like sex, I mean they procreate through photosynthesis out there, it's wild. So what's next? Well, patches, patches, batches of patches. Ah oh, shit. Here we go again. One for PC and one for consoles. A complete rework of the game's code was put into motion, and a reprint was necessary if they wanted to revert back to the M rating and recoup all the scratch they lost. Like Deja Vu, the title hit retailers once again with a second edition stamped under the ESRB rating to convey that all the characters' genitals have been mutilated. I actually uh, dug out my copy of San Andreas just to see if I had second edition, and uh, turns out I don't. So in my hands, I hold a piece of controversial history. Can I get arrested for this? Behind the scenes though, the suits were still not happy. I mean, this brought into question a hell of a lot more than why Sam was so freaking horny all the time, but how this even got past inspection to begin with. Enter Hillary Dennis Rodman Clinton, the woman of the hour in this overarching narrative. She decided that we reconsider how these things are enforced and introduced FEPA, not to be confused with FUPA, the Family Entertainment Protection Act. This would make it so that not only are video game ratings federally mandated, but annually inspected for the main character even thinking about having sex. Not only that, but the sales of any M-rated game to a minor would result in 100 hours community service and fines of up to $1,000. I mean, can you imagine picking up trash at the park because your son wanted a copy of Brutal Legend? Brutal Legend. The bill would thankfully not get passed, but Chillery's attempts would be forever immortalized in Grand Theft Auto 4 by adding her supposed likeness to the Statue of Happiness, and instead of a torch in her hand, 
a cup of hot coffee. But back to the issue at hand. When the smoke cleared, all that remained on the horizon were Rockstar recouping the $25 million they lost during the recall, and the three words more American than apple pie and 4th of July. Class action lawsuit. All of the victims who purchased the game and vomit at even the thought of sex were eligible to claim a rebate of a whopping $35. But for some people, this wasn't good enough. An 85-year-old woman took Rockstar to court for failing to state what was hidden beyond its age rating after she purchased the gang-banging mass murder simulator for her 14-year-old grandson. All of the poor bastards with similar cases would be consolidated into one in the battle against Rockstar, with the court case taking five long years which ended up in Take 2 having to cough up $20 million. And as for Sam Hauser, the FTC would seize a buttload of internal company emails to decide whether or not he intentionally deceived the public, but was let off with a slap on the wrist because he promised to always clearly display what kind of monkey business players can expect from their games. And I think it's worth mentioning that even with this permanent stain on Rockstar's report card, history would actually repeat itself with the release of the definitive edition of San Andreas last year, with the minigame's code once again slipping under the radar upon release and requiring a patch, but this time with nobody to shift the blame to. During an interview with Doug Lowenstein, the now ex-president of the ESA, he lamented Rockstar's decision to refuse to own up to their mistake by saying, if you want to be controversial, that's great, but then don't duck and cover when the shit hits the fan. Stand up and defend what you make.